if you have said to yourself, I should write that, or if someone has said to you, you should write that, then I'm talking to you because you need to write. And that's why you're tuned in to Why Write. Today's episode is brought to you by the Law Offices of Rafer Pellegrino. With a reputation for results for over 25 years, Rafer sets to achieve positive results for all of his clients. He and his team support the best possible settlement in order for you to get your life back. Consulting with investigators, medical experts, forensic scientists, and more, he builds your case to win for you. Rafer Pellegrino for the win. Hi, I'm Angela Grout and welcome to Why Write, a program filled with conversations with writers about writing to help you write too. Do you have a story in you? How many times have you heard someone say, you should write that down? Or you've even thought to yourself, I wish I could write that story down. Maybe it's to share with someone in your family, maybe it's to share with more. But we want to help you to become a writer too. So I'm here to talk to you and some really talented people who have put pen to paper and shared their story to find out why they write. So today, our my guest is a wonderful man that I've met in the last few years. He is from Agawam, Massachusetts. He's a Capricorn like me. Um, he has written two novels. One of them, his first, The Promise to Astrid, has been adapted into a movie. It was voted the 2019 Christian Film of the Year, or a film of the year. Um, Wonderful story that we're going to talk to him about. He also has written a book called The Healing Voice Project. Well, actually, Voices from the Falling. The Voices from the Falling. Sorry, Voices from the Falling. (laughs) And um, it has been adapted into a podcast called The Healing Voices Project. So that's my little confusion there. Mm. He... um, you know, has been a good mentor in my life, and he has a very talented wife with who also has healing hands as a massage therapist. Um, I want to welcome Michael Torville to the show, and thank you, Michael, for being here. Thanks, Angela. Appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Sorry, you know, the, the whole healing voice, it, you know, the... <clears throat> You want to sometimes think like the podcast and the book is the same, but... I get it mixed up all the time. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a break on that. So, yeah, yeah. so okay, we're going to jump right into that yeah, yeah, because, sure, yeah. you know, you wrote this book and it became a podcast. Like, yes. did you plan on doing that? No, of course not. <clears throat> I didn't plan it. And as you probably know, things just evolve. Evolve. You know? They do. And uh, so going back to the, the origins, actually, of the book Voices from the Fallen actually came from a movie. Oh. first versus A Promise to Astrid, which was a book and then a movie. So, and to, to elaborate on that a little bit, I think it, to clarify, well, how did the movie turn into a book? Yeah. What happened I mean, there? Yeah. of course I want to know this because... <clears throat> I just do things opposite, you know, so... <laughs> I sometimes uh, do too. Yeah, However, yeah, yeah. you know, I've written my books and I think, oh, April Rain will be a great movie, <clears throat> you know, or Dear Baby Get Out will be a great play. <laughs> who who and, watches a movie and say, I'm going to write a book about that. Right, exactly. <laughs> but it happens. I mean, a lot of people, yeah. especially like, you know, mm-hmm. people who have shows sometimes tend to write their memoirs later and it becomes a book, you know? Um, But when you're talking about, you know, healing, this is a book about people with addictions. Yes, it is. And and so uh, to go a little bit about it, and I won't won't dwell on it too much because, but I think it's important to provide some context as as to what happened here. Um, Several years ago, actually in 2016, a very good friend of mine who I've known since five years old, and you know him too. His name is Kirk Jonah. Yes, Kirk's he was on the show the other yeah. day. Kirk lost his son, uh, his 19-year-old son Jack, unfortunately, to a heroin overdose. Um, and of course, it was devastating to his family, but uh, sometime later, Kirk um, started speaking at schools, creating awareness about opioid awareness and everything. And so um, being a good friend of Kirk's, we, we talked about quite a bit about this. And having been involved with the movie production people through the movie A Promise to Astrid, I remember suggesting to Jason Campbell, uh, you know, Jason, you do all these purposeful movies about uh, high school bullying and internet safety and things like that. What about doing a movie about heroin addiction? In Western Mass, it's really tough. Mm -hmm. In West Virginia, where he's from, it's certainly a a high rate of opioid deaths. And I explained about Kirk and his family's um, issues and what was happening there. And he said, absolutely, let's do it. 
well, I thought let's do it might be a year. Well, let's do it meant like right now. Yeah. So that spur it was May of 2019, and instantly we got Kirk's family involved because I said, well, well, let's not do it until I talk to Kirk. <laughs> <laughs> so we actually talked through it with Kirk. Are you ready to, to, to go through this? Because it's a tough thing. Anyway, um, we started writing the script, arranging auditions, um, casting, yeah. filming. Through that summer of 2019, it was a blur. And after this movie was produced, filmed, edited, um, it was premiered in November of 2019. Mm -hmm. And as Kirk speaks at schools, and he, now he has the movie, and he said, Kirk, you know, we ought to write a little booklet. Yeah. Um, so there's a takeaway. There's something tangible for the people okay. listening, the students to Definitely. to take about about information, about examples of stories that could inspire people. So I said, let's let's put this together. Well, as I was doing it, I was actually overwhelmed. I'm telling you, overwhelmed yeah. with people who said, "Yeah, I have a story to share. I have a story to share." And I started okay. saying, "This is going to be a bigger project than just a little booklet." So I started interviewing people, and I probably spoke to 40 people. Just a, an addict, a person who yeah, went through yeah. it, their family members, and and this thing evolved, again. Organically. Unintended mm -hmm. at first. Mm -hmm. And the book, Voices from the Fallen, and you think, what voices from the Fallen? It's their voice. Each story is told from the first person, very intimate, very mm -hmm. personal stories. These are not like case studies at all. You get to know these people. Yeah, you know, yeah. your writing has really inspired me as <laughs> a writer. Um, and uh, I, I, you know, we we kind of jumped a little bit ahead to yeah, yeah. the second project. And so, I mean, it's fine. That's I know fine. we're yeah. excited about we'll it all. Yeah, yeah. You know, but yeah, when right. I met you, I mean, I met you through your wife. Mm -hmm. And I was at the time getting ready to publish my April Rain. And of course, as a writer going, who am I to be writing this book? How am I going to share it? The anxieties yeah. that go yeah. along with putting a book out there, knowing right. your story you feel is important. And, yeah. and, and important enough to share with someone, whether it's for education or for inspiration. And when I was sharing this with your wife, she said, oh, my husband's publishing a book. And I said, he is? What, what are the it? chances of that? Yeah. Right, 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 right. Oh, it's called A Promise to Astrid. So right away, I'm like, I got to read this book. I got to yeah. find out what, why he wrote this book and like what, why he's putting it out there. Mm -hmm. Like what, what was the takeaway for me? Mm -hmm. You know, because, you know, people read a book. You don't know what they're going to get out of it. We can't control that. We know why we're doing it, but it doesn't. I find it means different things to different people, It too. means different yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Your Promise to Astrid, it's such a, a faith-filled book. I mean, I'm a, I am a spiritual being having mm -hmm. this human experience. Mm -hmm. I find, I feel I, I have very strong faith and have these connections with, you know, my deceased loved ones, the angels, the saints. And, you know, you having this experience with Astrid, you know, in real time, you know, it was like, wow, this is, this is how faith and spirituality become, evolves. Mm -hmm. Cause here you meet this woman and she comes to your, in, in real life, you know, she's yeah. alive. Mm -hmm. You're meeting her. She comes to you at the right time in your life when you're unexpecting it. Well, yeah, <clears throat> certainly she's unexpected. An it. Human and, angel. Uh, and actually I won't seem unexpected, resisting it too, which yes. is another thing. But, and you know, and that's the thing, a promise to Astrid, and I do want to talk about that, but the voices from the fallen, Having already written a book, <clears throat> this was already, now I know how to do this. I, yeah. I know how to work through the publishing and the editing. I know I'm capable of it because I've done it before. Yes. So this project really became a mission with the Voices from the Fallen, and I wanted to make it very personal, very moving, very relatable mm -hmm. to not just the person who's going through addiction, but their families, yes. and say, yeah, you know what? As I'm reading, this is us. This yes. is how I felt. And so we were trying to accomplish that. So that's how that book came. But again, it all stemmed yeah. from it Astrid. It all stems yeah. from Astrid. And Astrid. the thing is, with yeah. the Astrid story, you're showing someone in real time, like, how you develop this gift to write, you know, the passion to tell the story, right. you know, and mm. then the story itself. Right. And the story itself does, yeah. you know, it helps people like me to well, say, you know uh, what, these angelic experiences do happen. So then after, you know, you publish Astrid, then I find out, it's going to be a movie. Yeah, like, yeah, how yeah, do you yeah. get this adapted well, to a movie? I know. You know? Sometimes serendipitous things yeah, just Yeah, I mean, happen. I remember sitting in, yeah. I think we were at Bethany well, <clears throat> Bethany Church is where mm. they did the, the viewing for it. You know, sitting in there yeah. and really, you know, knowing that, like, everything we create comes from above, comes through us yeah. to share with others. Well, so here <clears throat> you share the story. And then next thing you know, you know, you got Kirk Jonas doing his movie. Right. And then... You come to the West Springfield Ecumenical Outreach, and I remember yeah, this yes, yes, yes. very, yeah. like, you know, like it was yesterday. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I'm on the board there, so I, you know, you're there. 
we're serving meals to the community. Mm -hmm. They're sitting there. I mean, you know, people come in who, you know, are, are lonely, who mm -hmm. may be living alone. They may be homeless. They may be, you know, just starting over. They may be, you know, addicts. They come in and, you know, we're serving dinner and we show the movie of the Jack Jonah story. Yeah. And I just, I mean, I'm sure you remember the, the people and their reactions. Yes, if, of I course. I mean, yeah. afterwards, the line at the door that people were coming to you saying, oh, thank you for sharing that story. Yeah, sure. yeah. And then them telling you their stories. Right. Like, they were just like, <clears throat> right well, away, like, oh, that's me, or I don't yeah, want that yeah. to be me. How do I get help? Yeah. And, you know, we weren't prepared that night to say, oh, we have these, you know, pamphlets here, go get help here, here, and here. And now all of a sudden you've evolved and written this book, which I would love to have you come back and do the movie again and be able to offer this book of to course. them. Of course, yeah, yeah. Because I sure. think, you know, it's really <clears throat> it's really helpful, yes. you know, to have that takeaway book to read and your story resonates with someone, whether yeah. you're the family that's dealing with someone who has an addiction, if you're the person who has addiction, and even the person who doesn't know that they could develop an addiction. Well, you said a lot. Now, you said, and back to your yeah. the whole title of this show, Why Write? Yeah. Right? What, is there a purpose to it? And mm -hmm. I have to, always had to think about that with both books. Is there a purpose to this? Is there a reason someone would want to read it? Mm -hmm. Okay, what can I accomplish through it? So even with Voices from the Fallen, the thing is, <clears throat> I started thinking, you know, how is this going to be helpful, relatable, and mm -hmm. what purpose does it serve? If somebody reads yeah. it and they're going to be, one, maybe inspired, mm -hmm. maybe learn something, mm -hmm. maybe relate to it and say, yeah, that's how I feel, and maybe... I should react differently. Maybe there's something else I should yeah. do. So, yeah, um, there's a lot of parts to that that I had to consider. And I always think if I'm reading this book, think from the reader's point of view, you know, what mm -hmm. do they want to hear? And I've found a lot of wasted words. I said, they don't need to hear that. Let's get right to the core of it and make the message concise, you know. So each story, each of the eight stories in the book are their own books. It's like eight books. short stories. Yeah, and, and could be eight different memoirs, movies. Of, almost like of a memoir, right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, very personal, very moving, very, um, um, again, I keep using the word relatable, and I did that for a reason, because you mm -hmm. read a story of about a rock star mm -hmm. who's addicted, and they can't relate to that. Yeah. You know, this is to be, this is happened in our family. This right. is what we've experienced. But, you know, <clears throat> again, going back to that, and then, of course, that led to the podcast called Healing Voices Project because after the book I had several people oh I have a story too would you write my story mm -hmm. too I'd love to because I enjoy writing mm -hmm. but but I didn't have the time you know I have a full-time job I said well, how can I squeeze this in but I wanted to and I said there's got to be a better way um, so hey wait a minute how about a podcast an ability for people to share their stories yes. so that evolved from the book so when you have um, them on your show um, are yeah. they have they been rehearsed at all Oh, no. So they're coming on, just walking in, telling of their course. story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, I went to a program um, in Hartford where this woman teaches storytelling. Uh -huh. So, like, you will go in and you will verbally tell your story, and then she helps you to condense it in, like, you know, eight minutes. Oh, yeah. And, you know, I'm just <clears throat> thinking, like, podcasts, you know, you have a time restraint. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you don't want to cut your guest off, but at the same time, you need them to tell, if they want to tell their whole story, I mean, mm -hmm. you want to give them that opportunity. Of course. Right, right, right. And we try, but we, we, we get it right. Mm-hmm half hour 45 minutes as much as we can yeah. same here yeah exactly and it's very it's it's hard sometimes yeah. <clears throat> but also too it gives somebody an ability and ongoing now it's it's available on the website it's available through youtube and they can share their stories and and do it that way um writing is a different a different thing you mm -hmm. know but this has just evolved and of course now it's getting the attention of besides people sharing their stories mm -hmm. we have caregivers and clinicians and program directors on the oh, show I'm too sure. to share so their helpful. information yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, we just had Kevin Ramsdale from the Springfield Rescue Mission on, and uh, so wonderful information there. But you know, again, as you've said, it stems from Astrid. And why write? Why did I have this why? story that I wanted to write? Why did I want to write it? Well, I've, t you know, there's some stories you can tell, but mm -hmm. they don't come across it. You have to really get to the thing. There's too much to tell with the Astrid story. So. 20 years ago, it was around the year 2000, I started to write this story down. And I read it back, and it was just awful. I said, this is terrible. I'm not a writer. I threw it into the trash, and that's the end of it. Um, I put it away. But then what changed was I have this job. Now, my job is sales and marketing director for Evans Cooling Systems. Oh, yes, I did not mention that. Well, that's okay. I was going to, because that's what and, he and what I was no, going to say he moonlights us. <laughs> what, what in the world does that have to do with writing? Yeah. Well, part of my job is to is to write articles, mm -hmm. all right, and we sell a, an, a, an engine coolant. Okay. And i got to write articles for magazines, and are, how do you 
say it different this time. So yeah. how do you describe an engine coolant 35 different ways? Oh, oh my goodness. you got to press your brain for creativity <laughs> As there. a florist, let me tell you, I mean, it's the same how do thing. I say you got to name different bouquets. Yeah. They're all kind of the same flowers, just arranged yeah. a little differently. But, but yeah, describe this bottle of water 35 different ways. you got to really dig deep. Mm -hmm. So I started getting, I said, well, I, I can do this. I, it started to become fun, you know? And so I said, well, let, let me take another crack at the Astrid story, mm -hmm. you know? So I started writing it, and the intent was just like a magazine article, but it was too much to it. And then as you write about a story that your own experience, First you start story. remembering things. You mm -hmm. go, oh, wait, I remember this. So you start writing that down and that down. All of a sudden became yeah. a longer story. And I was actually, I hadn't shared it with people. I was embarrassed by it. Well, that Angel's Journey, weird. I did the same thing. Yeah, I sat on it for a couple like, years before I shared it. I don't know if it's shareable or not. And then other things developed that got the attention of certain people. And and if you read the Astrid story, you know there's all kinds of twists of, mm -hmm. of things. And that's no wonder why it turned into a movie, because this Astrid's still at work. Mm -hmm. This is the way it goes. Yeah. Um, but she uh, certainly had an impact. And, and my, at the time, young family, and this is, took place in 1987 in Chicopee when I lived with my wife and two young sons anyway um she certainly had an impact and the story's a wonderful story oh it's a beautiful story yeah. it really is a beautiful story um and Astor was your neighbor and yeah she was an 80 year old who tried to help us after a car accident and i i resisted her and i remember rolling my eyes going all right Astrid, just humoring her yeah, you know yeah. not realizing the force behind what she was about to have take place here and so <laughs> certainly it's uh worthy of of the storytelling mm -hmm. and i'm so glad i did it yeah um and you know it, what's really nice and what really impacts me is everybody people who've read it have said oh my gosh that was inspiring oh my gosh it's it felt so good yeah so i, I have a lot of nice people thing. say that yeah. to me about an angel's yeah. journey i just had yeah. a woman come up to me today and you know had said you have to tell me about this book because you know, I happened to see it today, and I she opened up to a specific mm -hmm. page, and, I, mm -hmm. you know, it speaks to you. Mm -hmm. And she happened to have an aunt who passed away yesterday, so <clears throat> it was like the the aunt kind of coming through to her on this, on this page. And, you know, like Astrid still working through you. I mean, you know, all of my muses, you know, I'll call them muses, yeah, yeah. but, you know, whether yeah. they're spiritual friends <clears throat> or, you know, it's like they have come through and wanted to share their story. And I would say, like, you know, why do you want to share this story? And it's like, you know, is it for me? Like, I, I have faith. Am I lacking faith? You know, but it's because I had the faith to listen to write the story. And, you know, you sharing Astrid, you know, allowed me to see that other people have this faith, too. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, you don't feel as weird. Because sometimes when you're a writer, you know, you're alone in that room writing. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you're yeah. You're like, what yeah. am I writing? Yeah. And believe me, sometimes it can it can take away uh, when writing Voices from the Fallen. I remember writing a story, and I said, my goodness, this is so emotional. I would cry during writing it. And after a couple of stories, mm -hmm. I had to take a break. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like it for a week or two, a couple of months. I said, yeah. I, I just can't tax my yeah. emotions anymore. Oh. And they get back to it. You work at it. It took six, eight, nine months to finish it, but it was very... Um, emotionally taxing. Yeah. And even when you're digging deep for memories, it's the same thing. I brought up emotions I hadn't felt in 30 years with this Astrid mm -hmm. story. And um, so that that's just what happens when you start to write. Mm -hmm. And you don't even realize it. And you're, it just your brain is just digging deep and coming out with these things. Yeah. Um, and then you reread sometimes what you write and you, you go, go wow, where, where did that, did that come, come from? from? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, it's what? true. It's or true. I can never share this with I mean, I've written yeah. some things <laughs> and I'm like, I'm going to burn it. I'm going to rip it yeah, up. Yeah. You know, things oh, like yeah, that. Yeah. You're like, oh, no. Can't but it's an that. experience. And you said earlier, you know, a lot of people say, gosh, I've always wanted to write this book. And, you know, I, how many times have we heard people say, oh, oh I ought to write a book about that. Yeah. You know, I the only thing I would say is start. Yeah, you have to start. start and, Pick up uh, a pen and actually yeah. put it on the page. Cause, yeah. I mean, I've worked, I've done memoir classes mm -hmm. with, you know, retired judges and lawyers and doctors and, yep. you know, wanting to share their own memoirs, sometimes for their profession and sometimes for their families. Mm -hmm. And, you know, stories do get lost in translation verbally. Yes. I mean, they do. Oh, get, so, right. If I read, if I give a book here it's always the same yeah but if i were to tell in 10 people by the time it's a yes. whole different oh, story it's like the telephone game somebody repeats you know. it and it's like no that's not what happened yeah <laughs> so, no it's so true um but this is always is what it is yeah. you know uh yeah that's so, that's the difference yeah so let me ask you how <clears throat> at what point and how did you go about getting putting deciding to do a podcast Oh, well, at the and podcast yeah and again when when i heard so many people say oh my gosh i have a story to tell i it's the, I, 
great. I just don't know if I have the ability. Again, right. remembering how emotionally yeah, taxing it was. Yeah, I have a lot of people who call me and say that. When you said that, I was like, oh, epiphany. Maybe Absolutely. I can have them on and they can just tell their yeah. story. And but. I've got several people who I want to tell their story. I just don't yeah. have the time. So it, having them on the podcast, I said, hey, that might be a way to do it. Now, I didn't know anything about podcasting. Yeah, I didn't know anything, anything about writing either. either. But you start, you mm-hmm. do it, and you go, okay, I think I can do this. Mm-hmm. right? So with a podcast, and I will tell you, give credit to Les Tingley, yes. um, who we know very well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> because I remember calling him and say, hey, Les, listen, I'm thinking of starting a podcast, and I don't know anything about microphones or headsets and, and editing, and can you guide me as to what equipment to buy and how to, I, I don't know. He goes, Mike, 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 you don't, you don't need that heads you don't need that equipment yeah. you don't need editing i said well how the hell am i going to do it he goes I'll do it he runs the media for the town of agawam and he said we need the content and this is mm-hmm. great content yeah um you provide that and it all made sense and it's a great um information for the community as well as being able to have people share their stories so it all worked very well yeah and uh, we've been at it for now a year and a half wow. almost and um and and it's just been going great and yeah. uh, I'm trying so, to catch up to you I mean I'm you know well, well, into, into this about a month uh, again, and a half but start anyway you know, and I well. you know okay it doesn't have to be perfect you wait for things to be perfect it just yeah. won't start so we just did it anyway I wrote the book anyway and mm-hmm. and learned and learned and learned and did the podcast anyway well, you you're a good example of that too let's yeah. just do it let's just do it I do mean, it and I, you know you, recognize and, the and things you, you find fix. you yeah. find the passion behind it of why you want to do it and yeah. I mean for me I, I enjoy writing I enjoy sharing well, stories I enjoy publishing yeah you know and I've done that now three times that talking to other people who've done this yeah. helps me to normalize this in my life yeah, as I'm yeah. going through my own transitions. Yeah. Saying, okay, how did you, you know how did you make this happen, and you know why did you decide to tell it in this format? You know, <clears throat> yeah. um, you know especially with the Kurt, the um, Jack Jonah story. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, here he didn't write anything, right? You know, but yet it got written. It got so written. the fact that you know you can tell your story and it can get written, and even the people coming onto your podcast, you know, they're telling their story, so they have that documented story in that yeah. podcast to share with their family. Right. And even to share with themselves as they're going through their own journey because it's healing. Right. I mean, it's part of their healing process. And and I'll even mention too, because Jack Jonah's story is in the book, Voices from the Fallen. He is one of the eight stories, you know. Mm. Um, It certainly had a a tragic ending, but as Mm. Kirk and his family agreed that the story's worth telling to create awareness. So certainly that's... um, yeah. hard to, to work through but but the, the family was great about saying there's a purpose to sharing a story yeah no yeah. I, I I off the show I want to talk to you more about that because yeah. I have an idea but you know yeah, I can't yeah. share it publicly yeah, yeah. about something that I'm working on <clears throat> I won't spill um, a secret either so secret. you know yeah, it's hard because yeah. as an artist you know yeah. it's like sometimes you know when you're doing a piece you want to talk about it especially for the developmental stages and stuff but you have to keep it so close to you mm-hmm. and as a florist for all these years I've I come to understand, like, when I'm doing a bride's wedding, yeah. you know, like, I plan all the details to her wedding, mm-hmm. and, you know, I'll be making the designs, but I can't, like, I'll post them on Facebook after the event, because they're her flowers. You know, I'm not going to put out a picture of her bouquet before before she even sees it. Right. <clears throat> you know, so it's like, I can't share that creative it. process, and it's like, you right. want to. Yeah, and yeah. Be like, oh, you know, look at what's going on right now, this live stuff, but at the same time, you have to wait till, you know, you've fulfilled your mission with what it needs to do right um and and, you know we talk about the creative process and all that and that's a wonderful thing and you're right and you say okay well one of the things i think and i'll just share a couple of thoughts of things i've learned which you probably went to the same thing now because you know i'm getting to that well well you know um first what i highly recommend is is have somebody read what you've written yes whether it's a chapter at a time or a full book if somebody wants to take the time to do that it's very helpful because the people who are honest yes. and say, you know what, this was a bit wordy. Yes. You know what, you you, and it's, you lost me here. Oh, good. I'm glad you told yeah. me that. I've written with the Springfield Museum, yep. and we will <clears throat> write right there for an hour, and then we share immediately. Yes. And, and people, that can be very daunting because you're like, I haven't even reread this. Right. <clears throat> but you do get that feedback of, you know what, what was the guy's name? You should have put that in sooner. Or... I wish you told me more about this, or you already told me this three times. Yes. You don't need to. And you, so you don't recognize it as you're writing. You and don't. have somebody, that's extremely helpful to get people's opinions who are willing to be honest. Yes. Um, and, you know, constructive, constructive criticism. Constructive, positive, you know, positive of course, feedback. But I can't tell you how many, yes. uh, how much I learned from people saying, okay, okay, and get an editor because there's things you don't miss. I said, oh, I think I got this right. And the editor said, wow. And I saw these red marks. And I said, well, mm-hmm. yeah, it is better now. Okay. Yeah. But that's important. <laughs> but one of the things, too, if you're going to write your book, because you always have the choice then, what now? 
I've written my book, and what now? Okay, geez, there's so many parts to it. There's the formatting, there's a the cover design, there's the size of the book, there's the font, there's the structuring of the, you know. What about permissions? Permission, copyrights, things like this, right? If you're using quotes, you well, know. Yeah, well, and I'm um, even thinking like Voices of the Falling, like, okay, you have Jack's story in there. Yeah, yeah. Do you have to go to Jack's family to ask their permission? Well, I had permission I mean, from every person. It's kind of like an ethical of, of thing, too. Of course it is, yes. You can and do I whatever said, you want, you're the creator. Well, I the willingness to share the story not yes. only even say it was an implied permission but their willingness to share yeah. the story and I talked to him I said but every story I said please read this if yeah. it's reflects what you felt right. if it's accurate and a couple little things no this was the so we worked through that and absolutely every single person in there said no that is exactly okay, okay That's perfect beautiful. Um, but when you go through that what now how do I get this published how do I get it out yeah. there how do I get it on you Amazon do you write a query letter are you searching for a literary agent yeah. or a publisher I did it all of the above yep. right I went through a self publisher I went through another publisher and then went to another till I find the best okay and I wish I had known yeah but I'll, a thing that you might you have known learn. I went to the self publisher first because mm -hmm. that just seemed like I don't know a publisher. How would I like self-publishing? And they charge a fee, mm -hmm. okay? And there's some services that they provide that that may be helpful. But I learned mm, it's just superficial help. That yeah, it's not really yeah. that great. But they also try to oversell you on marketing. Oh yeah. Buy these bookmarks. It only costs you five hundred dollars. I said, well, I can just print them at Staples for right, 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 fifteen dollars. Yeah. You know, but there's things that you just have to really think through. And I would say even contact, uh, not volunteering you, but contact you, mm -hmm. contact me, yeah. and say, uh, what do you recommend? I'd be happy. And yeah. I love talking about this with people. And by the way, if somebody wants to contact me, I wanted to mention the, the website. Yes, I was. Yeah, HealingVoicesProject.com. 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 And there's a contact, there's and an that, email. And we'll have the information about the books, the podcast, yeah. contacting yeah, you. There's a lot of information in there, All yes. account, yeah, yes. so that's good. Um, and I uh, just started a blog, too, so that's just uh, some just information busy. related to, to all of this. And but, you still have time to wine and dine your wife. I love it. You know, take your vacations, give her her time. You can do yeah, once a year. Wife. Once what? a no, year. No, it's more than that. No, she, no. <laughs> she speaks highly of you know what you guys do. It's yeah, wonderful, yeah, no. and she's uh, encouraging with these you know our, our crazy projects. Well, you our know, spouses do think we're a little she crazy knows sometimes. More than anybody, I have a hard time sitting still. Yeah. You know. And it's like you, you have Damn. a lot of energy. And I said, well, I'm sitting here doing this interview I, going, I want to move around. <laughs> yeah, I just can't lay on the couch and watch TV. So I'm always having to do something. So this is a great outlet. Writing is a great outlet. Yeah. Preparing for a podcast and having conversations mm -hmm. with people. And people who know me, and they know what I love telling stories. I love talking, having conversations with people. So I enjoy that interaction. But, yeah. but there's more to it than that. There's a purpose to it. Right. There's a purpose to sharing someone's story or providing information about drug addiction, yeah. substance abuse. People say, I don't know what to do. Yeah. Well, maybe this helps. The Astrid story, there's a purpose to that. People can get inspired by, yes. you know, how her generosity, but not, but more than that, you have a purpose to this podcast. Yeah. So you always have to think, you know, what's somebody going to get from this? Right. And, and, yeah. and even though we can think about it and mm. analyze it and try to actually, you know, write a script <clears throat> and prepare for yeah. it. It still just evolves on its own. It does. It, there's something greater than us in all of these and little stories. The only way, but... and I keep repeating, the only way to get it to evolve is to start yeah. and start, and and you find surprising things happen. Mm -hmm. You f have surprise conversations, like you did with my wife Kiana. Oh, your husband's published a book, yeah. and then we had conversations yeah. that helped each other because I, mean, I learned from you. You learned from me. Yeah, it was just amazing. So, you yeah. know, I remember going to yeah. your one of your book talks. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, coming in, and you know, at that point, I had already done a couple book talks with my other one. But, you know, April Rain was a bigger story. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was less of a memoir than the other ones. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's like here I'm sharing the story of a girl who was murdered. Right. And I don't know anything about, you know, why she's murdered, but I'm writing this story to create the why, you know. Yeah. And, you know, in telling that story, I knew, uh, you know, doing book talks, you you talk about it. You want to be honest about why you're writing. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially when it's in like a little bit of that fictional, you know, sense or a fantasy sense. Right. And, you know, going to your book talk and, you know, listening to you talk about Astrid mm -hmm. and, you know, bringing these realistic moments that some people might think might be fantasy, but it's not. I mean, it's real. We know this is real. These are true stories. Um, you but, know, when but you yes, have an yeah. angel encounter, you, yeah. you know, <clears throat> living, living or, you know, mm -hmm. you just know. Right. And, you know, it was it was helpful to see how audiences r respond to that. Yes. You know, because it's very interesting, the questions that they have or and the interest that they have. Yeah. You know, because everyone does have that, you know, their own personal reason for reading your book. 
Yeah. I mean, of course, you know, we all want to support you and well, you know, read the book and encourage you. But, you know, when you're reading it, there's that story in between the lines that definitely resonates with yourself. Yes. After writing the Astrid book, one of the things that I found unexpectedly is I heard from people locally who knew Astrid. Ah. They said, oh, my goodness, I saw the newspaper article about the book. I read the book. You know, I knew Astrid, too. She helped us, too. And here's a story about I was on the phone with a woman and... Um, my goodness, she started crying about Astrid. She was making me cry, and we had this long conversation um, about Astrid, and it just oh, it killed me. Mm -hmm. And then another woman had called, and uh, she says, oh, my goodness, I read the article, I read the book. And, and um, she, again, same thing, she started sharing stories about Astrid. So she says, you know, would you mind coming, stopping by and bring a book, because I have a couple of family members who knew Astrid, too. would be love, love to have you over just for, you know, a cup of coffee, are you free maybe Saturday afternoon to stop by for just a few minutes to talk to me? Sure, I'd love to meet somebody who knew Astrid, right? So here's what happened. I, I asked Kiana, my wife, I said, would you want to come with me to, she goes, who? I said, somebody who knew Astrid. Okay, she was great. And she came and so we went and we met um, them. And yeah. anyway, the 15, 20 minute meeting took to, we were there till 1030 at night, polished off a few bottles of wine, got a couple of pizzas. Nice. And we were there for six hours <laughs> talking. So we made new friends it, and, and unexpectedly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And, you yeah. know, the, the divine guidance that <laughs> <It> was, coordinates <laughs> all of that. You're like, how did this happen? You know? I know. I know. And it was fun. We had a blast. That, yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. just, it's so wonderful. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I feel like there's so many stories out there that, mm -hmm. You know, many people have. I mean, yeah, people yeah. have had yeah. these like serendipitous moments. Right. And, you know, sometimes just writing those serendipitous moments down, you know, can help somebody. Right. You know, whether it's in a joyful situation, like when you m went to dinner and had six bottles of wine with your well. wife and her. <laughs> or, you know, it's like, you know, someone <clears throat> with, you know, in Kirk Jonas's case and his family, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, they've had this tremendous loss. And there are these serendipitous no moments that have happened mm -hmm. with the experiences with Jack, with experiences of knowing that his story is important, needs to be told, right. and then finding out that, you know, sharing his story needs something more. Right. Which is where, you, you know, you What can someone learn more. from it? What can mm -hmm. somebody... And how can you prevent it? Yes. From exactly. happening again? And that's the whole idea, you know. How can we um, prevent it? But also, too, how can you get somebody to pay attention? You know what? If, if that person came through, mm -hmm. if that person recovered, then maybe I can, too. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm thinking my story is so tough and it's hard to come through, but they had a tougher time maybe it'll inspire people yeah or give information to somebody say you know what i recognize these behavior patterns right maybe i ought to do something about it before it's too late mm -hmm. so we hope to accomplish yeah. that no you're yeah. so accomplished yes. and <laughs> it's an honor yeah. to, to it's an honor to have you yeah. as a neighbor and a friend you know like you know meeting yeah. fellow writers who you know share share the, this the passion passion and the creativity and the <clears throat> want to share to help you mm -hmm. know i mean because i think that's another big why why people do publish is because they know that their story if it helps one person you know what i mean then you've done something yes you know trying to do that trying to one way or the other and you know at so, the end of the astrid book and i included some of the cast comments oh yeah the cast members yeah, the actors cast. produced it dean kane dean was, kane was yes, in it was in, in fact, it superman yeah. and he did a great job yeah yeah and 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 He's, him among other others what astrid meant to them and how a lot of people now are saying wow i feel like a new astrid wow, i feel like i know Astrid. she's actually guiding some of my decisions now and i mm -hmm. thought wow what an impact yeah she's had 30 years after her death She's having an impact. Yes. Now, Astrid, there's a funny thing is they had this, this story, and of course, this, the movie takes a few liberties, but if Astrid were alive today, she would not like any of this. She did not like any she didn't attention, want the attention at right. all. Right, she didn't want the attention. Well, it's for a greater purpose, so that's okay. But you know, you like know? <laughs> like her name, the Astrid's in the sky that flip yeah, by, yeah, right, right. You know, that flutter by, yeah. the people who see him mm -hmm. want to share. Right. You right. know, when you've been impacted by an yeah. Astrid or Astrid, and if, you want to share that story. So regardless of, no disrespect, Astrid, but, you know, regardless of the fact that she doesn't want to be in the spotlight, right. it's really her actions that are in the spotlight. Oh, yeah. And to yeah. know that it's had it's having an impact by writing the story, mm -hmm. you've had an impact. Yeah. 
I mean, I remember That's the scene wonderful. of yeah. you and her in the garden. You're moving the angel statue around for yeah, her. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it's just a sweet scene. Yeah. And you sharing your inner thoughts about it at the same yeah, time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's very realistic. Well, that part was very realistic because I really, I was dismissing her. I was rolling my eyes and, oh, God, what does she want now, you know? <laughs> just, <But. laughs> just move this for me. You're like, I got to go. I'm yeah. late for work oh, here. Yeah. And she'd pull no. these little tricks on me all the time and outsmarting me all the time. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was just, um, um, but looking back, yeah. certainly you have these different memories at the time. I didn't realize what was going on but looking back and reflect on it and say wow there's more to this than I yeah. thought um, but yeah there's a there's a, so much more to it and you know the, the book is just um, it's very different it's different from anything else so I hope people um, d- yeah they will read it. Yeah. I think everyone will you know yeah. read the book you're gonna take something from it let mm-hmm. me tell you you're gonna find something in there that speaks to you um, and that the, the um, voices the voices the Healing Voices Project, let me get this right, The Healing Voices Project is a podcast that, you know, you can log on your computer and you can go to thehealingvoicesproject.com and get more information on that. Um, this has been wonderful. Thanks. Yeah. Are, are you writing yeah. another book? Are you working on another I'm book? I'm working on one. Uh, it's just okay. a little tough to... <laughs> yeah, no, I know. It's a lot to fill I am, in. I am working on we, one. We keep and, busy yeah. and we still need to get a little sleep here and there. Right, right. So, yeah. even though sometimes in the middle of the night we wake up and Life gets in the way hours. of everything, you know. Life just, does my get job in the way. gets in the way of everything. I know, our jobs. Uh. So, um, anyways, I want to <laughs> yeah. thank you so much for coming sure. yeah, on the yeah. show. Um, I want to yeah. thank our sponsor, yeah. the Law Offices of Rafer Pellegrino. You know, they're always there for you when you need anything for legal advice, and they're not just your average lawyer. They are there to help you for the win. So call Rafer Pellegrino in Springfield, and he will be happy to help you because he's been happy to help us sponsor this program to bring it out to you. Um, we have some great upcoming shows coming up. I have uh, literary agents from New York coming in. Mm-hmm. They're going to come in and talk to us about um, what, what a literary agent can do for a writer. Um, I have some people who have not only written some plays, some monologue plays, coming in to discuss things, but you know, I have people from around the country who are going to start Zooming in, so we're going to have some pretty good programs coming up here on Why Write. So I thank Studio 954 for making this available to stream into your home. Um, I thank our sponsor, Ray for Pellegrino, right now. I thank Michael Torville for coming in. Mm. And I especially want to just say thank you for you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for your interest in thinking about writing your own story and being interested in our stories. Um, this is the point of the program where I have a writing prompt for you because you're tuning in to say, you know, why should I write that story? So I'm saying pick up your pen for about 10 minutes. You can set your timer you can do 20 minutes but you just have to pick up the pen and start writing grab a piece of paper scrap piece of paper a nice fresh piece of paper from the printer get yourself a nice journal and write down a story and today's story I want you to think about starting with the prompt of oh they were an angel or she's an angel because and tell us your own serendipitous moment with someone because right there is something that you really need to share So again, I'm Angela Grout. This is Why Write, and thank you for tuning in today.